Hey guys, today we are going to talk about seven magic cards that have gone in price and we'll go into more detail about what to look at and what cards are good to buy based on these seven cards. So Nico Boles, it is a $22 card from Legends, Black Border. But you do have a Chronicle version at $1.40 and you have a From the Vault Dragon version at $60, which is in foil. So what is interesting about Nico Boles is his Chronicles version. Chronicles has been a set most people stay away from. Most people treat Chronicles like, you know, they don't like Chronicles. People don't like Chronicles. Maybe it brings back a bad memory time. The majority of Magic players, I would say 95% of Magic players, did not play during Chronicles. So they don't really remember Chronicles. To them, Chronicles might just be a way to get cheaper cards. We've seen some cards finally tick up in Chronicles. I'm going to show you the graph of City of Brass. So this card is very interesting because the Legends version went up in price. Mainly, I feel from casual demand, we all know Nico Boles will be in the next set. It would be absolutely appalling if they created this whole set for him and he wasn't there. And every single piece of land had his horns as the artwork. Regardless, Nico Boles, people will like him. He's a big planeswalker slash creature. Do I expect him to... What do I expect him to look like? I expect him to look like a... Amaket God, where it can be a creature if you turn it on, but I don't expect it to be a planeswalker, mainly because with all the oaths out there, it doesn't make sense that you would get the benefits from the oath of the Gatewatch while you are, you know, the enemy of the Gatewatch. Next, I'm going to talk about Goblin Game. Goblin Game is along the lines of another card I'm going to show you today. Whenever you have silly effects and idiots, what I've learned in the past five years is modern staples, man, they're going to eventually all get reprinted, so you will get hit pretty hard. So modern staples, man, Legacy, who's going to play Legacy with you? Like Legacy, there is a limit to the amount of players. That limit is the dual lands. You will never have more dual lands tomorrow than you do today, unless they are fake, which is a different issue. The large majority of Magic players are casual Magic players. They are not the type of person to really care about Reddit. They are not the type of person to net deck. They are the type of person to play kitchen table Magic, and that's what I've been doing lately. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you just play with your friends, you play whatever you want. We are actually playing Hypnotic Spectre. Dark Ritual into Hyp Hypnotic Spectre is still really fun to play with. Uh, Sarah Angel and then that like Lightning Bolt is very good. Original Counterspell, Mana Drain. We're just playing super casual. It's a lot of fun and the magic is all about fun. Goblin God game is one of those cards that is so out there in terms of what you're doing. You're hiding items and then you're trying to guess numbers and it's actually not that great for what its casting cost is. I mean, its casting cost is seven. This is not going to see any competitive play, but when you're just hiding stuff, it, it's a lot. It's kind of like an unglued card that's not from unglued. So unique cards will go up in price because they are unique. And it's difficult to reprint Goblin Game. So this card is not in any danger of being reprinted. I do want to take a moment to talk about the Chronicles. And 7th edition, 8th edition, which are also white bordered, are finally the same price. Or I guess Chronicles is slightly higher. Chronicles is an interesting set today. It was not interesting a few weeks ago when the cards just kind of staled out and the prices didn't go up in price. But Chronicles, when I see Concord, I see City of Brass, maybe Nico Boles, that would be an interesting one just because it's Legend copy, which is the Black Border copy did go up. Will the White Border copy, which is $1.40, go up when I'm a cat, it's announced? And perhaps all of these casual players will be like, oh, cool, I didn't know Nico Bolas existed. Now I know he existed, and now I'm going to buy his original card as a white border for $1.40. 
there are some cards that move really fast and there are some cards that just don't move. If Nico Boles is in demand, like he's the type of casual card that you will find a buyer any time of the day. Now, some cards like, uh, let's say power nine, it's you have to find a buyer and that buyer is going to be extremely picky. You have to wait, you have to play the long game that buyer's gonna really care about conditions, they're gonna care about every nick, they're gonna dime you to death. But anyway, Stadia Brass, I love the card, and I love the fact that Chronicles finally has some level of respect. Not all the cards yet, but I've this is the first time I've seen so many Chronicle cards get to a reasonable place in terms of what I believe the value is. Remember, Chronicles is much older than 7th or 8th edition, so it should be more valuable, and it's slightly. As we talked about Goblin Game, anytime you can take a creature and multiple people are taking creatures and multiple things are happening, that's EDH for you in a nutshell. This card is also very difficult to reprint. The, the problem here is the only place you can reprint it is in a EDH commander deck. And EDH, my gut feeling is it's targeting new players or it's tar targeting really casual players. So casual players will love this card, but new players are just not going to get it. This is overly confusing and it's triple red. So a mono red EDH commander could probably push it, but even a dual color is really difficult for a six to hit, I guess seven. So it's not... <laughs> Not only is it triple red, it's also incredibly expensive in a color that lacks, I guess you have soul ring, but lacks good mana acceleration, like green or, you know, a green with the Gaius Credo is very, very good. The Priestess of Titania is very good. It's not in green, essentially. So it does have a Aphrodisian copy, which is the same price as the Mercadian Mass copy. If the copies are the same price and there's no difference in, okay, one has a sticker, one doesn't have a sticker, always buy the original copy. You always want the original copy. In this case, the original copy is black bordered when the Aphrodisian one I don't believe is. The foils in Aphrodisian were black bordered, which look really nice. I don't know why they went with the white and then black border foils. Anyway, uh, so let's do a standard card, commit memory this card has gone up in price again we are seeing some control builds which is interesting uh it shows me that aggro itself has kind of petered out that dragon that went up to 12 dollars is back down to seven i think it's going to hit six by the time this video is up it's probably six dollars and fifty cents by now Control is where I see standard heading, mainly because it's kind of like, hey, I have a Gideon. Now I need to protect my Gideon. Good, I won. That's what I imagine standard would be like. Gideon is by far the strongest card. I'm going to change nothing when they're in relationship to the probably the number of Gideons that we'll see play your FNM. I like this card a ton, but... Three dollars seems a little bit much. It was always a sub one dollar card until very recently. It is a good control card, and there is a critical mass of counter spells or playable counter spells. And if you're playing a control deck, you want two items. You want card draw, and previously we saw that card draw card go up in price. The instant speed where it's X double blue and you can draw X cards and you discard one at instant speed. That's actually not bad in terms of what a control deck wants to do in a very responsive way. You do want to get value from your turn and this is good. I like it because the aftermath effect, it makes a lot of sense to me. It's in your graveyard, it costs six. You're going to do it for the late game. I like the card a lot. It is something that if you have them, it's time to trade them away unless you are making the control deck, which is very fortunate for you because now you don't have to pay triple the price or six times the price. Okay, let's talk about these old cards. If you have old cards from Legends, 
and beyond, Legends Arabian Nights, obviously Alpha and Beta. Do not sell them for bulk. Do not sell any of these for bulk. Let me repeat that again. If you have, if you're fortunate enough to own any of these cards, even the really crappy ones, I think there's like a Peregrine Falcon, it's a 1 1 blue flyer with um, Vigilance. They didn't call it Vigilance back in the day, but they called it something else. Even that card one day can go up in price. And I'm going to show you two cards that seem really bad, and honestly they are, and they've been reprinted a, bl a billion times probably. Uh, as you can see, the 7th edition copies owe me $0.35. Cents. The Legends copy is $6. Yes, that is correct, $6. For And I believe, yeah, this was an Uncommon Legends. I'm pretty sure that either this one or the Vampiric Link, which is the black version, is a common. I'm pretty sure this was made a common sometime. But anyway, this card and any card in Legends has the potential to spike just because it's owed. People, it's kind of like an actual collectible item. So you don't need to be on a reserve list to be a collectible item. You just have to be owed, have really great artwork. And this is as one of, in my opinion, one of the iconic artworks from my childhood. I always loved this card. This was amazing because life gain, life gain was good. And I'm going to show you another card with also very iconic artwork from Legends, but has been reprinted to Oblivion, and it's also very cheap. If you have these older cards, and no case should you sell it for bulk, like you don't want to bulk this out, you just want to hold on to it, because eventually it can do what Kismet did. What is Kismet? Kismet is a bulk of bulks. It is a very bulky card, and as you can see from the prices on the right, uh, it's anywhere from 29 cents, 27 cents but the legend version has spiked to three dollars and 32 cents and most importantly it's always been around a dollar fifty two dollars this is the legends effect this is a effect that is also in place for arabian nights alpha beta obviously unlimited it has the same effect in unlimited as i found out about two years ago People say it's 93, 94. It's this like archaic format that was newly invented that people don't really play. They just kind of, I don't know what they're doing with the decks because I don't really believe they play the game because I don't know how you would find a player. It's not like you can just find some, it would have to be your friend from high school or middle school, or elementary school because that's the only person who has these cards. I feel like it's more like, hmm, people are actually collecting these. So what do I do with these old cards that I like? I, I love Kismet, obviously it has a tiger in it. I love Savannah Lions, Alpha Beta versions are my favorite. Even the Hill Giants are kind of funny. Uh, and the Orcs, the 2-2 two, two Orcs for a 2 and a red, and the Hill Giant <laughs> for 3 and a red for, you know, power. All right, I'll, I guess my favorite is from Legends, it's like Wood Elemental. <laughs> it's like the worst card ever. People, I make artwork from them. I frame them up, the, you know, whatever it costs to frame them. It is expensive. I still have some items I had to frame up at the Michaels. Like, do you know that Michaels had professional framers? Like, I did not know that until I was talking to my secretary. I was like, okay, so can you frame this for me? And she's like, no, blank you, go to Michaels. I was like, what? What do you mean Michaels? And it's like, oh, they have this eye on the back. I've been to Michaels a few times to buy stuff. And like art supplies, paints, and but I never knew that Michaels had like a, a, a department that's so job and it's pretty huge too. It's like this, like on the whole back aisle, is to take your whatever artwork and then frame it. And I was like, oh, can you do magic cards? And I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, we can do magic cards. It's not cheap. Maybe there's like a coupon that I don't know about it, but it's not cheap. Anyway, that's it, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye.